emotional, aren't they? Grand finals, premierships, that's what they're all about. Emotion is a great thing. We're inside the rooms here with the Melbourne Football Club. You can see Jake Lever and Daisy in the foreground there. And we're joined by Tom McDonald. Luke Hodges with us as well. And Hodge, you just I was just going to ask you before we get to Tom, 151 premiership players now with the Melbourne Football Club. What's it like to be part of a rare group? Well, we could ask this man here. It's the feeling, just watching the guys out in the Oval, the excitement. When we spoke to them to start with, they had they were lost for words. The emotion, you can tell you, there was tears in the yeah. eyes. How is it, mate? Look, it, I never thought we'd be here, to be honest. Um, you guys belted us for years and years, and we were a rabble. And uh, we finally turned it around and got a club we can be proud of. What, what were the main reasons it turned it around? Because it's, it's so hard. With, with AFL football these days, teams will continue to squash it. What were the main factors that turned this team around? Look, there's a few things. I think there was a uh, there was a commitment to doing it right. This guy helps. Yeah, look, Max, talent helps. Jump in here, mate. Where, where am I going? Here? Sorry, keep going, you Tom. Want, keep going, Tom. As Sorry. we said, talent helps. Having good players is essential. But I think we saw a buy-in to culture, to selflessness, to work rate, to off-season training, um, and we get the result on the back of that. Normally, normally you are, you look back and you go through your lowest points to really appreciate these times. 2018 on this uh, over in Perth on this ground. You got belted by West Coast. How did you just grow from that position? Yeah, it was pretty grim. Um, to be honest, since I've been in the club 2009 and Tom in 2010, we've we've seen some grim times, and um, especially in that 2012 to 15 era, just before Ruzi came in, um, there were some bad times, and supporters would have been feeling that as well. That's what makes today was special. But to come back to the scene of the crime in 2018, um, we won the prelim, which was really special um, against Geelong, and then we came out here and did that. Um, we love this crowd now. It's great. <laughs> hey, uh, Max, are you going to get on his meat diet now? Is that going to be part of the thing coming well, forward? Well, who was better, in your opinion, out of him and, and Ben Brown? Well, they're both pretty good. Just, uh, I'll, I'll give it to Brownie today. Brownie's vegan, Brownie's good. So yeah. do, we, do we go on the vegan <laughs> You actually, to be fair, combine it. You like I don't mind a bit of you, I don't mind yeah, a bit so of Maybe that's the secret. I, I get the feeling that you guys, and I, I've seen it in other premierships as well, but particularly with you, the camaraderie, as it's got closer and closer to this point, has got more finely tuned than ever before. Yeah, I, I think it's the most important thing. We've had talented teams throughout. Um, every year, round one, you get into it and you go, we're going to win the flag. But it doesn't happen. It hasn't happened for 11 years and there's been some beltings there. So the one thing we needed to change was to become closer as a group on the field. Off the field, we're great mates. Like, we can go for a beer anytime we want. On the field, we've decided to get a little bit closer and you see that out, 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 out there. When people kick goals, there's genuine love for when people kick goals. And, um, and we saw it at our best in the second half. Very rarely you get to this stage of the year and you look around and everyone's relaxed. Prior going into a grand final, I think it started with Goody. Every time we saw him in the last couple of weeks build up, yes, you battled Geelong, but that's normally when the coach is at, at the most intense. Every time we saw him, he always had a smile on his face. It looks like he set the tone. He gets all the intense out of the morning. He wakes up at 5.30, he walks 10,000 steps that he's a maniac in the morning. But I think he started the last two games, he's come in and he's had a funny video. And that's broken the ice when we we're all we're all scared. We're coming in, we're nervous, we don't know what's gonna happen. And he's got a funny video, everyone has a laugh and we relax, and I think that's helped us. Hey, we haven't mentioned Neil Danaher yet and the Steins family. Have you got a word for both of those groups? Uh, yeah, so we've had a lot of tragedy that's followed the club, um, especially since I've been there. You got Troy Broadbridge, uh, Dean Bailey, who drafted me, drafted Tom. Um, you got Colin Sully, who's a former teammate whose parents reached out to me during the week. Um, and then obviously Neil Neil Danaher who's going through one almighty fight with MND. And um, his poster was actually up on our walls uh, before the game. He's, yeah, he's, got a, he's got a big quote that you can talk as much as you want, but it's about doing. And that was my captain's speech before the game. I quoted uh, Neil's, Neil's famous comment and um, he, lives, he lives with us. Like, and he's still going strong. It's a shame he wasn't here for us uh, tonight. But um, yeah, the Danaher family, the Steins family, it's very well documented my connection with the Steins family. But, um, they're special people that, that, that make this club so special. It's making, especially making the club special. You're about to, uh, when you get do, do all your celebrations, you get home, you've got a bit going on back in the, uh, the personal life. Yeah, I just FaceTimed Jess and she said she called the obstetricianist twice tonight. Um, <laughs> so no mate, baby yet. Probably through the second quarter. I reckon she might have got a little <laughs> worried and there was a bit of movement. But, um, yeah, in the next two or three weeks. So this moment's going to get Trump pretty quickly, I think. Hey, well done, boys. Thanks for joining us. Thanks, Appreciate boys. it. Uh, Congratulations, you, Tom. Good good on, mate. Mate. Thank you. Well done, buddy. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks Max. Thank you. Good on you, mate. Thank you. Uh, two amazing guys, two amazing players. I really wanted to have a chat with Jakey Lever. What, what I just um, love there. Is he? Jake... As, as the two blokes walked off, then they it was a big embrace, it was a big cuddle. I think, as they said during uh, the interview, just then, how close they are away from the footy field. But you could sort of see them then the passion in their 
the passion in each other when they had the hug, then you just sort of see what each what these teammates mean to each I've other. I've just sent JB on a job. He doesn't do many <laughs> sort of lowly jobs, but I sent him on a job to track down Jake Lever. He's going to go over there and find him. My phone needs a charge as well over there, so we're getting that done all in the break here. It's absolute pandemonium down here. It's spectacular, fantastic. And we're just really hopeful we can get Jakey over here. I know his mum and dad are watching as well, and they want to be part of it, so we might get him over. We'll go to a break, and uh, we'll take a very, very quick break and be back for all Melbourne fans inside the Melbourne rooms. here as the emotion continues from previously on the ground but we're now live back in the rooms with Hodgie here of course and we've got the dynamic duo Hodgie in the back half I don't think there's been so much said about these two in the lead up well not just to this game but the whole year in holding the old team together it's normally the forwards that get the job done and get all the praise but I tell you what I think for the first time just about in history you two guys finally get the credit for being the absolute directors of this team. What about that? Yeah, it's fantastic, BT. I think that, um, you know, when Steve came over in 2019, uh, we had a conversation about that we wanted to build the best back line in, in the competition. And um, the, the two years in, to, in terms of 2019 and 20 probably didn't go our way, but we sat down at the start of the year and I think the, the behaviours and the fundamentals that we, we uh, started in pre-season day one, they stood up on the on the big stage and I, th I couldn't be any prouder than not only Steve but the whole backline group. You look at how tight your whole team is, but your back six. I know when Maxi Gorn was up there about to hold up the trophy, you seven defenders, six and the best, <laughs> you're off on your on your own having a photo. You're not worried about what Maxi Gorn's doing, about all the attention. You guys had your little group there having a photo, just celebrating within yourself. Yeah, um, you know, as you know, Hodgie, um, Building a strong backline uh, requires, you know, obviously performances, but that relationship off-field, and um, we've, we've gone through our fair, 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 a fair few ups and downs, and um, this year we set a pretty pretty stingy goal to, you know, be one of the best uh, backlines in the league, and, you know, I, th I thought when Shoy Chaplin threw that up, I was like, you know, let's, let's baby steps, maybe top eight or top six, um, but no, nah, he was pretty strong on that, and, and um, yeah, I know we're sitting here now with a medal, and we were pretty poor in the second quarter, but part of that, I thought we were right. So how important is it to have that six or seven? You've had a great run with injury this year. To have that six or seven group of defenders together for long periods of the year. Oh, like I, I feel for guys like Jaden Hunt, um, who, who went out yeah, of Yeah, he played every game up to yeah, round 21. Got an injury, unfortunately. Jake Bowie comes in, yep. performs. Um, you know, the most, the most calm seven game I've played with, I've ever seen. And, well, he hasn't um, played in a loss yet, Bowie. No, no he's, he probably thinks this is easy. And, <laughs> um, but, you know, our relationship, there's probably seven or eight, nine of us um, that uh, week in, week out can put their hand up. But the continuity and the, I suppose when you're performing each week, it's hard for the coaches to make a change. So I really do feel for the guys that don't play, but they, they were out there celebrating with us. They know how, how much it means to them. And, uh, and Jake, we spoke to Maxi before. He's got a bub due not too far away. When you had to leave Melbourne to make the trip to obviously play Brisbane, play against all other states, you had a five-week-old. Yeah. How's the FaceTime going? You've already touched base with him already? Or? Yeah, I have. It was great. Uh, Fraser Rossman, one of the young guys, gave me his phone to, to ring Jess, my wife, and um, the two little ones are asleep. But, uh, yeah, my wife was crying on the phone. And, um, yeah, obviously it was super tough leaving them. Um, especially when Scarlett, my little daughter, is five weeks old, and Jace, my son, he's, he, I think he was 18 months when I left. And, um, but uh, you know, I said to him, and I told Abby after the game, that uh, I said to Jess, I'm not coming home empty-handed, and um, yeah, that's come to fruition, so I'm pretty proud of it. How was it with all the downtime? Because you had the bye the week off, you played Geelong, you had another bye. Is that, was that the hardest time? Yeah, absolutely. I think us dads got together 
um, last week and we all sort of looked at each other. We didn't really know what to do with our time and um, that was probably the toughest week because uh, you knew that uh, obviously we were so excited to play in a grand final but um, the uniqueness of actually having a bye before it um, gave us a lot of downtime and a lot of face time and yeah, I think I rang my wife maybe six or seven times a day just to speak to her. Hey Steve, let us all in on the secret. The, the little twin, twinge on the hamstring. We're all watching the prelim final. We all said, get him off, get him off. Don't just make sure he's okay. How, how close was it? And Well, look, to be honest, um, our doctor Laura just came up to me on the way out and said, do you want to know about your scan? Because I got it scanned and she didn't tell me. And we decided to just go <laughs> off our, my symptoms. And um, for the next two weeks, I felt strong, I felt good, I, I trained. Um, and they wouldn't tell me, so it was probably a good thing. I was like, oh, it must be nothing. And then she just told me then it was apparently pretty bad. And um, in the second quarter, I went for a ground ball and I felt it. I looked at Rick, I was like, man, something's not right here. And then I came off half time and I just sort of thought, you know, suck it up for a half and you could be a premiership player and deal with the hammy in the off season. And so I'll, I'll probably find out more about it, but <laughs> it's, by the way she told me, it sounds like there's a bit more there than she told me earlier. Wow. <laughs> How are you guys feeling? Early on, you guys were on fire, and then the doggies came at you, and there's no doubt with 60,000 people here nice and loud that you guys would have felt a little bit of pressure during the, uh, the second and the start of the third quarter? Yeah, absolutely. I think that um, half-time we walked in, and in the second quarter, we sort of had a little bit of a conversation out there that uh, it was all about our contest. We've been a great contest team behind the ball, and um, we weren't winning enough of that. And uh, I know Steve... I uh, really put it on us at half time and said that uh, our contest stuff has been, you know, hasn't been good enough, hasn't been to the level that we've played to all year. And um, Troy Chaplin came in and basically said the exact same thing. So, Stevie, you might be a coach one day. Um, but yeah, we knew that it was just all about our contest. And um, I guess it helps when the, the mids, uh, you know, did what they did at the end of that third quarter. I think it was three or four centre bounce goals. Um, when you're on the receiving end of that, as a backline group, you know how hard it is to bounce back. So we're super proud it was going down the other end. Well done, boys. The two happiest defenders <laughs> ever in the history of football, these yeah. two. Look at them. Lovers. Good on you, guys. Thanks well done. Thank you, guys. Thank, Thank you, you, Thank you very much. Good, good on you, Jakey. Well done, buddy. Well done, Steve. Well done, mate. Jakey, good on you, mate. And uh, I think JB's going to join us. I think I'm just about cooked and done, JB. So I've stolen a Red Bull. You've been fridge. over there celebrating. I, I have. You and Goody over there oh, holding yeah, hands. I love Goody, of course. And for the last half Richie's an hour. here too. What Take about that for a performance? Just yeah. six in a granny. <laughs> no, it was um, good to play a little part in, um, obviously, a 57-year drought. And um, it's very exciting times. We were just talking while you were chatting to the big defenders. And 17 of the last 18 goals of the game. And the biggest winning margin in the history of this amazingly proud club. Yeah, that's uh, that's crazy to hear. Um, we wanted to come into that third quarter and play our best defensive quarter because we thought we let the foot off the pedal a little bit in that second quarter and uh, we knew our offense would come off the back of that so um, and to pile on those goals at the end of that third quarter was uh, some great reward for good defensive efforts. The play that I thought that sparked it, the doggies had all the play. Jack Viney went through a contest, knocked it on, Harms got it, hit you on the fat side, you went back and kicked the goal. The next contest, track comes out the middle. What did you do? <laughs> uh, I tried to sit on Eastern Woods' head. <laughs> uh, thankfully, it came over the back, and then, um, yeah, got another, got another goal, so it was nice. And that was the moment there, that those two contests in the space of 30 seconds, and then they, you buried on another three or four goals straight away, but you just turned around, you got the crowd up and about, and you just sort of see the boys start to relax, and you knew that your, your form was back in. Yeah, the um, support here was unbelievable from the Melbourne uh, fans, um, and that really got us going and uh, played a massive part in the victory, I feel. Fritchie, you're a premiership player and in the grand final you kick six goals. You're the first player since Darren Jarman in 1997 to do that in the big dance. Yeah, um, I don't know what to say. Um, it's obviously got on a couple of end of a couple of cheeky ones early and then um, yeah, was lucky enough to find the ball in that second half and um, it was credit to the boys up the field to uh, hit, lace me out. What about the three finals? I, I mean, they were emphatic. It, it belted Brisbane, belted Geelong and then you've just belted the dogs in a granny. I mean, you can't do it any better. Yeah, I think once we've got some momentum in games, we've really piled on the goals, which has been obviously good in the final. So, um, yeah, it's great times and, uh, yeah, I'm pretty speechless here. So We spoke throughout the game about the uh, inaccuracy throughout the season and I think we were, you guys were rated number number 18 in the, in the league. That changed when the pressure got put on and that second half was so good to watch. But you guys were calm, composed. It started with you with those two goals I was talking about. Yeah, we've done a lot of work from day one with Greg Stafford on our goal kicking and nailing our process. And um, we knew that that would stand up in the big games and um, that's showed in the last three weeks. So it's nice. <laughs> big Benny Brown, 
How do you link up with him? He's a different unit, Brownie. <laughs> nah, yeah, he's a bit of a different unit, but he's a great teammate to have. He's always he's either marking it or uh, bringing it to ground. And uh, when he's clunking them and then he's kicking them straight through the middle, it's uh, you're pretty happy to be playing alongside him. Who's at home for you, Fritchie? We know that a lot of uh, family and friends can't be here. You look down the barrel, who do you want to recognise? Okay. Uh, I'm tipping that uh, out at Coldstream, um, it'd be going pretty nuts at the moment. So I uh, love you guys. Um, I can't wait to uh, get back and celebrate with you and to my girlfriend at home with the dogs and a couple of friends. Um, I'm looking forward to getting home and celebrating it with you also and everyone that's played a part in my uh, journey. So uh, go Dees. Was I told by someone that your brother kicked 20 goals in a game for Coldstream this year? Yeah, he always gets brought up, Darcy. He loves it. So uh, I suppose when you've kicked 20, it's probably fair. So, um, yeah, he kicked 20 and uh, good effort. That's unbelievable. All right, go and enjoy it, mate. Too easy. Couldn't be Thanks, happier for you. Well played. Right Six in a granny, Hodgie. Not bad, considering all the other people that are on the list that kicked five plus. Yep. Were always the blokes that they were the six foot five fellas, mate. Looking at him, he's the same height and weight as you, JB. Oh, no. And I ain't kicking six. six in a grand final. Tom Brown, great to see you. JB, just incredible scenes here in the Melbourne rooms, aren't there? I mean, they there's are. just so much going on behind us. The tragedy the club's been through, um, all the uh, recruiting and key decisions they've made to get to this point. I spoke to Gary Pert on the uh, the CEO on the ground afterwards, and he gestured across to Gary Lyon and said, in a few minutes, we'll be presenting the cup the Melbourne Premiership Cup after 57 years to the players. You just couldn't believe it. They've been through so much, this yeah. club, particularly this century, and uh, it just means so much to so many people in this room at the moment. And so many great player stories as well. You know, key, recruit, key recruits, Stephen May, Jake Lever, guys coming on board. Max Gorn, I think, was inspired by Neil yep. Danaher and his speech to the players, yep. which we've heard about tonight. Um, Luke Beveridge has obviously just spoken as well, and uh, he was, in particular, asked, I asked him whether their travel schedule might have caught up with them. And he wasn't obviously going to use that as an excuse. He said Melbourne were just absolutely formidable. But uh, I think at the end of the day, probably there was some evidence that it perhaps did. So, uh, interesting issue. Just talking to Simon Goodwin back there, and um, he, he said, I am 100% I am lost for words. He said, I can't put into words how I feel at the moment. And this is a club that this time last year had a football review yes. conducted by Gary Pert up in Noosa, where obviously uh, Josh Marnie, who's been highly successful uh, at Essendon this year, was replaced by Alan Richardson. They had a little bit of a board coup in the year, and Glenn Bartlett, the president, is actually in the rooms, which is great to see. Oh, I'm about tonight. to say, that is wonderful to see, because he was enormous. And a cohesive board, but they did make a key change yep. in that regard during the year. But it's all about players, isn't it, Hodgie? If you've got the right players, you win flags. It is, and I was so impressed with their leaders. And when that when they won the game against uh, against Geelong, when Maxi Gorn kicked that goal, you heard Petraka talk, and you heard Maxi Gorn, and they knew that the responsibility for so many people, history of 57 years, all the past players, all the supporters, they felt that, and they they said openly that they were doing it for, for them. And when he gets to the big stage, normally that's where you can falter a little bit because you've got too much on your mind. Those players didn't. They were outstanding today, and they've had a sensational forward. But they uh, got so much out of that win down in Geelong. You talk to all of them, and they say as soon as we got over the just in that game, so much belief came out of being that far back in a game and being able to win against an opponent as good as the Cats. And, and see and little Andy Brayshaw <laughs> in the background there, but and how Mark enormous well. was Clayton Oliver? He was absolutely incredible, Clayton Oliver, tonight again, just led by example. And uh, full credit too to Alan Richardson, yep. because it's been difficult for the club with the weight of expectation. I do feel he shielded the players in the last couple of weeks from some media obligations and just kept them focused on the game. And you never know which way that's going to go, do you, JB? But he's really, really kept them focused, Richo. And he's just done a remarkably good job from a footy manager perspective. Well done, Brownie. You've done a magnificent job covering footy for us all year. Uh, it's an absolute privilege to be here in Perth and witness that uh, incredible spectacle tonight. I think the other story that will come out was the halftime spectacular oh, again yeah. and the case for the Twilight or Night Grand Final. And, and for our viewers, obviously on the Eastern Seaboard. I mean, imagine that also yep. at the MCG with 100,000 fans under lights. Uh, it was an amazing performance by everyone. Well done to you. Thanks, guys. We're going to take a break. We'll be back in the Melbourne rooms to wrap up after this.
27 long years, there would have been a lot of Melbourne supporters that never thought this day would come. How proud Simon Goodwin must be. There's the Norm Smith medalist. There was never going to be anyone else winning that award. He was unbelievable. Christian Petrarca, 39 possessions. And um, there's a happy man. And speaking of that man, the Telstra tracker days. Well, he kicked the, the, their first goal, a big bomb. They needed it. They'd been on top. And then he, he was the one that held them in it as well. When Bulldogs were really coming, he stood up in so many critical contests and just kept them close enough. And then in that third quarter, and the floodgates opened out of the middle, some of his centre bounce work, unbelievable. And it was that power where he could actually pick the ball up and just take him on. And, and you said earlier in the, in the game where he, he saw a Bulldogs play come at him, he's just fended through him, gave the handball off. No one was going to stop him today. Doesn't flinch because of a tackler. <laughs> when he emerges out the front of centre oh. circle, is there a more exciting thing to watch in footy? I was lucky enough to obviously be on the boundary. And when he exited through the stop, yep. you know, the, the front of stoppage, just the crowd, the roar. Everybody mm. loves Christian Pedraka. He's so incredibly strong through the hips. And as you guys have just touched on, he's very, very hard to stop. Well, Ab, we all had earphones on, but oh. you were down there. The noise at this place, it is quite simply extraordinary. I could hardly hear you guys throughout the entire call, so I'm sure you did a great job. <laughs> no, I could. Um, but the noise was incredible. The atmosphere was insane, and, and the Ds got the job done. They just performed so well. times like these you learn to love again it sounds like these time and time 